All right, so here we go. We know that when we have a pile, sorry for my ugly pile, but we know that there is a side friction component and an end bearing component, okay? Side friction resistance, this is a tau. End bearing resistance, this is a sigma. All right, now we're going to concentrate this video is basically going to be uh, concentrated on the determination of this, the FS. So let's say that we have a pile, oops, and the pile is embedded in the ground like this, okay? Let's say that the pile is 8 meters long and 1 meter in diameter. Okay, let's say this is a drilled pile, which means that it's made of concrete, obviously. Okay, and basically that's it. Let's say that this is a sand. Okay, and this sand has a friction angle of 38 degrees. Okay. The question is, what is the side friction resistance? That question translates to the following. What is the side friction that develops if one were to load the pile so much that it punches, meaning that it moves relative to the soil so much that we call it a friction capacity or let's say a capacity failure okay so that's that's what this question means or we can state the question the same way well if you think about it this literally is a tau right you you know this and you know that it is the maximum tau that can be sustained at the interface between the pile and the soil this fs is the maximum tau that can be sustained between the pile and the soil so it is essentially an s a strength but you know from soil mechanics and geote geotechnical engineering you know that the strength is written like this but what strength is that first of all is the drain strength second of all this goes away because we don't want to rely on cementation between grains okay generally to be conservative so we're left with this okay now this strength what is it for it's for soil right it's for a soil to soil interface the fee is a soil to soil fee and the sigma is the stress, I'm pressing my knuckles right now, right? That stress is the sigma prime. So how is this a, stre a strength then? Well, it is a strength because it is a maximum tau that can be sustained. But is it a soil to soil? No, it is a soil to pile. So you could go like this. This is the pile. This is the soil, these are the grains, okay? soil to pile so if we were to write it over here we would write that fs which is a strength is sigma prime tangent phi but we're going to say soil to pile s dash p Okay, so we have written the same equation for strength, which actually comes from a block on a table that has a weight n and the force, which is a shear force required to push the block is what? The weight n, which is normal the plane 
times the coefficient of friction between the block and the plane or the plate or table right and the fluid that is inside the asperities between the asperities or whatever okay this is where this equation comes from obviously you know that right and we can rewrite it here but for the soil to pile interface not for the soil to soil interface which this one is for but for the soil to pile interface now if we have a sigma or if we have a tau which is is what this is that is anytime we we think of a stress we have to think of a point because stress acts at a point so what point are we thinking of here well the perhaps the best way to represent the system with a point is to place the point in the middle of the pile okay because if we place the point too high up then the stress is too low if we put the point down here then the stress is too high but a good representation that is we could say that therefore a good representation of the placement of a point would be here now we can we can attach this equation to the point how so because the stress is the stress that acts at the point the tau is the the tau the, the shear stress that would develop at the point okay and the phi is the friction angle that describes the interaction between the soil and the pile at this point okay now clearly this is a tau so we can draw it right here fs what is the sigma that we should attach to this point is it the vertical stress whoops is it the vertical stress acting like this on the point or is it the lateral stress or horizontal stress acting like this on the point well if you go to Hamilton's rule the force that is multiplied by the frictional component is always normal to the plane in this case it depends on what plane you're looking for right or what plane you are addressing if you have a point in the soil and the plane is oriented this way and you want to know what the strength is on this plane you would have to know this effective stress that is normal to the plane in question right so down to here now this is the plane in question what is the stress normal to it the horizontal stress so this is the horizontal stress okay and so here's our equation for fs all right now the question is how do we get the horizontal stress well you know that the horizontal stress at a point is equal to k times the vertical stress that is effective stress obviously right so if we know the k then we can determine the horizontal stress if we can get the vertical stress at a point effective obviously and that's easy we can get that right now there's one thing to say here that is very important the k that you are essentially uh, used to or the k that you know is actually called k naught k naught that little naught or little zero there means at rest what does at rest mean well essentially it means that we have a geostatic condition when we invoke k naught so let me just write this down here let's say that you have a point in the field this is a profile flat ground nothing going on with respect to construction or excavations or anything like that 
Well, in this case, the relationship between sigma horizontal effective and sigma vertical effective is K0. Okay? But what happens, what happens if you dig a hole right next to this point? If you dig a hole, what's going to happen is that the soil is going to relax laterally, in this case to the left, and this will be reduced. So now the K, instead of being this, is going to be a small sigma h prime, and then the sigma v will remain the same. So this k is lower than this k naught. And the reason is obviously the, the, the following. If this value is less than that one, then this k is less than this one. If the vertical stresses are the same, which they are, because we haven't added or removed anything to the top of the point. Okay? Now, what happens... I'm going to redraw here the point. This is a hole, right? Now, what happens if you insert an object, you force it into the ground? If you force an object into the ground, the soil has to go somewhere. Generally, it moves out of the way laterally because the horizontal stress is lower than the vertical stress effective at any point. But if you, again, if you insert an object, the soil is going to move laterally out and it will cause the horizontal stress to increase. Therefore, the K that is produced by this situation is equal to a large horizontal stress divided by a vertical stress that is the same as in all cases, in all three cases, okay? But in this case, again, because the horizontal stress is increased, the K becomes larger than the K naught, which is for the case of a just a flat ground and nothing happening, right? So what's the point of this? And I know that I, it seems that I'm deviating from this, but I'm, I'm not. I'm actually... I have to do this so that I can explain what happens over here. So check it out. If you dig a hole, you're essentially doing the first step that is required to drill a pile. So when you drill a pile, when you drill a pile, um, you essentially cause a reduction in the horizontal stress effective. And therefore, the K that must be used is not K0, but the smaller K that results. Okay? In fact, perhaps I should make this K a little smaller like that, than this one. Okay, now, obviously, you know what's going to happen here. If you insert an object, like a driven pile, you're going to end up with a K that is larger than the K naught that was there initially or that described the situation initially when there was no pile, okay? So if the pile is driven, then the K is not K naught, obviously, but it's actually larger than K naught, okay? So now that we know that, we can proceed as follows. When we determine parameters either in the lab or in the field, what we determine is actually K0. Okay? So we will we know what K0 is for this soil. Let's say that it is 0.5, okay? For this sand. So we would we are going to write it here, but we know that depending on what the pile is, that is how the pile was constructed, sorry, we have to modify this K0 so that it becomes smaller for a drilled pile, sorry, smaller for a drilled pile or larger for a driven pile, okay? 
and we're going to do this by adding to the equation a parameter that is called CK this CK is either going to be or this is going to be multiplied by the K0 obviously this is a, an equation here that I'm writing where everything is multiplied okay all the all the factors but this CK if it turns out to be larger than 1 then the multiplication of something larger than 1 times the K0 is going to lead to the new K which is larger than the K0 in our case you'll see in a second because it's a drill pile the CK is going to be smaller than 1 and therefore let's say something like 0.9 times whatever the K0 is which is 0.5 is less than 0.5 because effectively we have a drill pile okay but you'll see that in a second all right how about sigma vertical well we can get that because we know that it's four meters from the ground surface right that is the point is if the water table is here then what is the vertical effective stress at this point 40 kpa okay tangent phi prime sp right but check out check, check out what happens here the effect the uh, friction angle for soil to pile for a soil to pile interface is not routinely determined in, in the lab or in the field okay what we actually determine in the lab or field is the fee of the soil which is down here so if the fee that describes this sand to sand is 38 what do you think the fee sand to pile is going to be do you think that fee sand to pile is going to be 38 or do you think it's going to be less than 38 or more than 38 well your answer may be the following you may say well it depends on the roughness of the pile if the pile is very rough something like that right then you know the fee may actually be very close to the soil to soil fee whereas if the pile were say dri uh, driven and made of steel that would be very smooth so then there would be particles grinding against smooth steel in that case the fee soil to pile would be smaller than the fee soil to soil so it turns out that the the fee soil to pile obviously is dependent on the material that makes the pile and how rough it is so what we're going to do is we're going to insert here the fee that we know which is this 38 and we're going to multiply that tangent fee times another parameter that's called cm okay so essentially what we have is the equation for fs now tangent fee yes the fee that we should put in here is the fee soil to pile but we don't really generally let's say measure that so what we do is we just write in the fee soil to soil and we modify it with knowledge of the material m that makes the pile so this cm is multiplied by this tangent fee obviously this is all you know these are basically one two three four five parameters that are all multiplied together so it doesn't matter how you know in what order you have them obviously okay this equation here is called the beta method very common very commonly used is it a drained or undrained method well this is a sand that's the first indication that it's a drain method why because we're using it for it we're using the beta method for sand and we know that sand acts drained both in the short term and in the long term right so the beta method is drained another indication that it is drained is that you have a phi prime here and a sigma v prime here do you see an su on drain strength in here no so you see a phi which is a drain parameter and you see a sigma v prime the prime means drained 
essentially. So the beta method is a drained method. Finally, at least in concept here, if you go to your reader, you will find this page right here where it says the foundations side friction capacity. Okay? And it says here in this table, beta method factors. Here's the CK. Here's the CM. Okay, CK. If the pile is drilled, a drilled shaft, CK is 0.9. You see what happens? If you take this 0.9 and multiply it by whatever K naught you have, you end up with a smaller K, a K that is smaller than K naught. Okay? If the pile is driven but has a small displacement, this is a small diameter pile, then it ends up happening that your K naught and your K are essentially the same, or your K is the same as your K naught because the parameter is 1. Right? So K naught times 1 is K, which is K naught. If it's a high displacement pile, which is a large diameter pile that is driven, a lot of soil needs to be pushed out of the way. So CK is 1.1, and therefore, oh, I made a mistake here. Yeah, sorry. Well, let's keep going. Therefore, K naught is smaller than the actual K that is working. Okay? The mistake that I made is that K naught in this case is larger than the K. Right? This K is 90% of the K naught. This K is 110% of the K naught for high displacement. And this is the same. It's one small displacement. Okay, now pile material, CM. This is the, the parameter that modifies the tangent phi. Okay, if the material is rough concrete, CM is one. If that's the case, then phi prime pile to soil is the same as phi prime. What I'm saying? Okay, so a rough concrete pile would be one that you drill, for example. If you drill a pile and you remove the casing, for example, a, 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 an auger cast pile or something like that, if you remove the casing, the concrete is going to contour to the soil and that creates a, a rugged surface on which the soil would basically grind against, right? So, um, so in that case, um, the, the, the soil to soil fee and the soil to pile fee, whoops, whoop, okay, soil to pile fee are, are essentially the same because the pile is very rough. So it's essentially like this. I mean, this is the pile, right? But right there. Okay, now, if you have, for example, a driven concrete pile, then that concrete pile would have been constructed with a form outside of the site and therefore it would be smooth you've seen videos of this okay in this case the tangent of phi pile to soil is 90 percent of the tangent phi of the soil okay so in this case, because the pile is smooth, then obviously the resulting tangent phi is smaller, okay? Because the pile is grinding against a smooth surface, not against, sorry, the soil is grinding against a smooth, smooth surface, not against uh, other grains. And as you can see, if you have, a, for example, a stainless steel rod or pile, which would be very expensive, then it's so smooth that the tangent phi is reduced to 50% of the tangent phi of the soil. Okay? So we'll use this when we do examples um, coming up in the next videos.